Good morning. I just came in from the garden and um, I'm going to give you guys the date here. Today is August 24th. Um, we are set to start school tomorrow. <laughs> I have only cleaned out one of the two schoolroom um, closets, which I think are pretty big. And um, I cleaned out the one that was the easiest to do. This next one is really bad. Also, I also have to clean off like the school desk or table because it kind of seems like things just keep piling up there this summer. Anyway, that's not what I'm tackling right now. Right now I am tackling the garden, <laughs> which I'd much rather do anyway. Good morning. My name is Jennifer. This is A Country Life and I just came back in from the garden because I picked a little bit of broccoli. Um, and you'll see. So let me just give you the rundown. So broccoli will first form really nice big heads, even bigger than this the first time around. And then once you pick that one back, um, you know, leaving like, you don't want to pull the whole plant, you just want to um, cut it back, uh, cut off the, the broccoli head, then it will continue to put out little broccoli florets that aren't really, really big. Some of them will be a nice size like this. But anyway, this one kind of got hidden and I can see, see how it's a little misshapen. It's because it's gonna start to flower shortly. So I got that quick and then I picked these, but I didn't have enough space because I had all of this dill and I had that um, uh, cantaloupe and I had all of those cucumbers down there. And so I grabbed an ice cream pail and I went back to get all of these other little florets because as you can see, they are starting to just kind of get like a little bit, I don't know if you'd say loose. Okay, so as you can see, the all the buds are starting to swell. And once those break open, they're going to get little yellow flowers and you don't want that. So I wanted to get these all before that happened. And since these are like the little side shoots, I knew that they were ready to be picked. Okay, so what I'm doing is just dropping them into really cold water that I added about a half a cup of vinegar to. If you're growing broccoli and you start to notice that you have like these little cabbage moths um, flying around or... You know, honestly, are they a moth or are they a butterfly? I'd have to look that up, but they're white anyway. And what they're doing is they're looking for a place to lay their eggs because those little cabbage moths or butterflies, they really like the brassicas, which would be the broccoli, the cauliflower, um, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, things like that. And they like to lay their eggs on the bottoms of the leaves. Well, then those eggs obviously are going to turn into like a little worm or a little caterpillar. And... They like to make their way into the crevices of the broccoli. So soaking them in a vinegar solution, uh, vinegar water solution for, I'll, I'll leave these in here for probably 20 minutes or longer, and uh, it just helps to get any of those out. Now surprisingly, I just saw my first cabbage moth, um, I don't know, last week, and I still, when I soak my broccoli, I still am not finding any um, of the little uh, cabbage worms. They're exactly the same color as the broccoli. <laughs> so what happens is they will sink to the bottom uh, once they drown. But um, yeah, I'm not seeing any yet. That's a good sign. I like to see that one time before I knew that. I actually put broccoli in to steam, and then when I took it out, the water was full of these little um, green worms. That was pretty unappetizing, let me tell you. But now I've learned and I know better, so I'm telling you guys that in case you grow broccoli for the first time. Okay, so I have all this dill I picked. This is enormous. Look at that, it's like bigger than our plates. Okay, I have had a lot of questions asking about what I used for fertilizer. I'd put a picture up on Instagram of our, like, I don't even remember what it was, 22 inch cucumber or something. Um, and this year, down on the garden, I've just been using basic Miracle Grow and I mix, yeah, I mix it up pretty strong, quite strong, I would say. Um, our soil can really take that. We have a very, very sandy soil, so it can take that quite well. And then um, I'm fertilizing. It says on the package, I believe it says every 7 to 14 days or something like that. I was going every 7 days for the whole summer. Then come about early August, I started doing it about every 10 days. And then one time in there, 
Warren did use a little bit higher nitrogen granular fertilizer that he uses on the cranberry marsh, but he had a little bit in his spreader and so I asked him to spread that on the garden because it just seemed like our corn needed some more nitrogen. You know, corn can take a lot of nitrogen and it just seemed like it needed a little bit. So he just kind of ran that around and um, then we watered that in. So one time it got that. And I don't know how much or how many pounds or we put on, but anyway, it was some of that. So that is that. I think I'm going to have about 15 quarts of pickles here today. I have all the way from little baby dills even smaller ones, let's see, that one's pretty little, all the way to some big ones here. Originally on Saturday when I peaked, I wanted to get out there yesterday, but it was such a beautiful day yesterday. We just spent the whole day out on the water, swimming, fishing, boating, that kind of thing. And now here we go. We have really, really big cucumbers today. That's okay. By now, if you have been watching all of my video videos, you will have seen my um, how to can, or how I can, anyways, um, pickles. And I will put that up in the, I'll put a card up here, and I'll also put it in the description box below if you want to go and reference that. Because today I'm not going to give you a full tutorial, just know that that's what's going on. I'm just washing up cucumbers and these kids come in. What just happened? Whoa. Well, we let, me and Peter went fishing. And I caught two pumpkin seeds, two bluegills, and a perch. Oh, yeah. Nice. And Peter only caught two bluegills. Hmm. Two pumpkin seeds Peter caught. Uh -huh. And a bluegill and a perch. That's all Peter caught. Oh. So Peter caught four fish, and I caught five fish. Nice job. <laughs> and he caught fishing way more than me. <laughs> and I caught more than him. So I thought that there would be 15 quarts of pickles, and look at that. I am getting much better at estimating. I remember at one point when I would bring in garden produce, and I'd think, oh, I'm going to have this many, and then I'd end up with, you know, you think you're going to have nine, and you'd have three or something like that, or, or the opposite. Anyway, I'm getting much better at uh, estimating. When I see it, this last jar is a little bit light on the cucumbers, but the other jars I crammed them in. <laughs> so into each of these jars I put a tablespoon of canning salt, a tablespoon of sugar, there is the uh, garlic clove in there as well as a whole lot of dill, jam them full of <laughs> cucumbers and then I put a half cup of vinegar into them and then I'm going to fill them with water up to a half, with a half inch of headspace. Now you may have seen in one of my Sunday prep videos um, it was actually filmed the very end of July, but just went up here not too long ago in August because, I don't know, I just like somehow completely missed that footage. Like, I had it in my K of, of videos to edit and somehow I just missed it. Anyway, in there you would have seen that I actually was pouring a brine over my cucumbers. That was the first time, well, it's probably the second time I've done that in, you know, 23 years or whatever. But I wanted to try the recipe that was on the back of the Mrs. Wages canning and pickling salt. It was horrible. We had a jar that did not seal, so I had put it in the fridge. And then we let it sit in there for about two weeks and we took them out. They're so salty, they were inedible. So I'm back to my old time way of doing my pickles, which is what I just told you. I do it jar by jar. I think it. I think that they have phenomenal flavor, and as long as they don't get over-processed and turn mushy, they're absolutely delicious. Just getting some ice water going because I'm gonna be putting my broccoli in here as soon as it is done. Um, I want to say parboiling, but that's not the word. For whatever reason, I can't think of the word right now. But anyways, it's just doing a quick boil and I'm blanching. <laughs> there we go. And then I'm going to pour the broccoli in here, get it nice and cold, and then I'm going to package. I think I'm going to have one quart bag. Alrighty, lunchtime now. We all just kind of had leftovers from yesterday and from the weekend, and Peter wanted to make ramen, so that's like his latest culinary efforts, right? 
Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. He likes to make ramen with dumplings. Tell us how you make those dumplings. Oh, it's really easy. All you do is take a, a small bowl. Mm-hmm. You put flour. You put some flour in it. And then you put some eggs in it. And then you mix it all together. And once it looks like it's like sticky, mm -hmm. then you put it in. Gobble turns. Is the water cold or boiling? Boiling. Yep, boiling water. You're right. And then once they kind of float, they're done, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What? Skunk. Skunk? Did you see a skunk? I Stinky frog. A stinky frog? Yes. Mm. We, we smelled a skunk on the way to church yesterday, didn't we? And a toad. And a toad? Boing, 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 boing. I I saw, I felt like I saw a skunk in the woods. Oh really? Hmm. Okay, we've got just about 15 seconds left on these, uh, on the second batch of pickles. I have one more jar of pickles and then this jar has actually been canned but it didn't seal so I'm going to put these two in together and do one more batch. It's like 20 to 3 in the afternoon and we are just going to head out and go and do some swimming because it's like almost 90 degrees today. So I was like, you know what? Let's get our work done. Uh, Peter, what did he do? Peter um, emptied out the trash cans from the bathrooms and maybe the bedrooms too. I can't remember. Maria swept the kitchen. I folded towels and Joe picked up all his toys and put them in his toy box. And now we're going to go swimming. So that should be... Um, just kind of a fun afternoon for a little while. I did check the corn before. Our corn is not ready yet. It's still just like little tiny, tiny kernels and uh, very, very white. So I think for supper tonight, I am, when we get back in from swimming, I think I'll just make up some quick, cre quick creamy cucumbers and, um, and then we're just gonna have pizza because you guys know that I bought all of those frozen pizzas. And so that's what we're gonna do tonight because I do still really, really need and want to get those closets or at least the one closet because I already have one closet cleaned, but we really have to get that other one cleaned. And what else is going on? Yeah, Amber went off to work. Sam is working today on the marsh. Warren's putting in an alternator, right? Yes, I think he's putting in an alternator. Well, we are gearing up for a storm here tonight. They're calling for like 60 mile an hour winds. Um, when we get, when we came in from swimming, Peter and Maria started making cookie dough. And yeah, they don't know this, but I thought the dough was a little wet. That stuff will be fine, yes. But when I sent them out to pick up all their toys and stuff, I added some more flour. There's kind of like this, sorry, I'm in my bathrobe now because I was gonna take a shower, but then Sam's in the shower. He just came in from work and now he's gonna go work out and he wanted to shower, but I'm covered in sand. And then um, I got kind of sweaty fertilizing and stuff. So anyway, okay, so we are, what was I just saying? Yeah, so there's kind of like this little fine line between letting them do their own baking or kind of like directing them away for a moment so I can like check the dough and stuff like that. Sometimes I like to talk them through that. And sometimes if I've talked them through it a number of times, I'll just add a little more flour or add a little tablespoon of water, depending on what I think, so the cookies turn out just right because we don't want to have anything go to waste. Tonight, we are going to have pizza. We thought that we were going to have um, 
um, sweet corn from the garden and pizza, but the sweet corn is not quite ready yet. So since Peter's using the oven right now, I'm actually just preheating. Looks like it's preheated. Okay, I'm just going to get the pizzas and I'm going to put one pizza on the air fry pan, another pizza on just like that rack in there, and we are going to make some pizzas. I'm also going to put together just a bunch of vegetables. We have a lot of um, vegetables right now and so yeah, that's what we're going to do. Well, <laughs> it's 9.30 now and um, we had a nice evening, so we weren't expecting this, but Emily and Sparky and Colt stopped over, and Colt, he is just such a little sweetie. And then, um, yes, and thank you so much, Jenny. You know who you are <laughs> for the honey. So I received um, two, or a gift of two pints of honey, and it is delicious. I already opened it and did that, but I'm just sitting out here at the schoolroom table. I actually have cleaned it up a little bit. <laughs> um, just trying to kind of get my ducks in a row here for tomorrow. What we're really, really gonna focus on tomorrow is going to be, um, we're gonna focus on reading and math and religion. And I think that's probably going to take us a, probably a full two hours to get through. And then we will wrap things up. We are getting that storm. If you, I don't know if you guys can hear the, rain and the thunder and everything but we are getting the storm so far no hail thank god we are so happy for that okay so i did want to show you guys this planner it says my catholic homeschool planner this was sent to me and so i have had kind of a good portion of the summer to look through it um and there's just kind of introductory page i do like in here that there's a lot of spots for notes which is good because i do take a lot of notes and write a lot of things down i also um there's also a full calendar here and i always label the calendars right away with the weeks of school so i can just kind of keep track of where we are there's a lot of quotes in this planner some contact numbers just giving you a little walk through here we have more quotes lots of things to just kind of help you um, just kind of feel good through the day uh, we have a curriculum log where you can uh, you can see curriculum subject how much it cost and some notes I think that this would be handy when you hear about something that you want to come back to uh, it would be a great spot to keep that written down in and then I do like this little section here. There's like a little section for seasonal projects and field trip ideas broken up by the seasons. Um, computer information, that's always really great uh, where you can, where there's space to put in, you know, what the website name is, your username and password because, you know, there's a lot of those these days. <laughs> We get into a progress tracker, which I think you could probably put grades or attendance. Oh no, here we go. We have attendance in here for plenty of kids. And then there is kind of a daily routine of what types of things that kind of just how the day is kind of going to go. And so I did fill this in already. I mean, we will this will change according to the day, but this is just kind of a loose daily routine for us. So we have our morning routine. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's getting late. My voice is just getting tired. Um, you know, get dressed, eat, make your bed, brush your teeth, put away your clean laundry, and do whatever your daily job is. And then um, morning read aloud. I always like to have some books that we are reading, um, that I'm reading, you know, to the kids all together and then we can do math and then reading lessons and then all of a sudden it'll be time to get some lunch stuff going so cooking and cleaning jobs and that will either be me or the kids or both uh, lunch and getting dishes done and then some play time that gives me time to make calls maybe take care of mail check emails do things like that it's just kind of some set aside time where I don't feel like I'm you know pulling myself away and then uh, science or social studies time, religion, art time, um, TV time, or play time, and then mom will probably be cooking at that time, and then some individual reading time before dad gets in from work, just as a little time to kind of calm down a little bit. 
There's a really, really nice calendar here, you know, a monthly calendar. I like that all of the Catholic feast days and saints days and just all the important things are on here. They, either, they even have, for the week at a glance, a saint of the week and character trait focus. So um, that's something that we can fill in and um, just kind of, you know, just as a nice place to remind you or remind me uh, what we're kind of going for. And then this is just kind of writing down the week here, what types of things are going to be going on, and then here we go to the next week. So that is how the whole entire planner is laid out. So what I'm going to do is just kind of get this filled out um, for the next few days, you know, for this week, and um, then it is going to be bedtime. So for our first day of homeschool, um, we are working through just like a book that classical or um, Charlotte Mason would, you know, that style of education would call a twaddle book. In my mind, it's not twaddle because the kids are thoroughly enjoying it and <laughs> ask for it to be read again. So anyways, it's just one of these like little unicorn books. Some girls go off to a unicorn camp they get their unicorn assigned to them and they have to kind of figure out and learn what their unicorn's magic power is. Okay, they like that book, so we're gonna read that book. <laughs> and then we're gonna go on to reading lessons. I'm gonna work with Joseph first. As soon as we're done with his reading lesson, I will help him get his journal ready uh, so that while I'm working with Peter and Maria, Joe can be tracing his letters in his journal and drawing his picture. Meanwhile, Peter and Maria will both be writing in their journal, and then, like, Peter might be pulled away from his when it's time for him to do his reading lesson. That's okay. As soon as it's time for Maria, he can just get back into doing his journal writing. So basically, their journal um, writing, um, depending on what grade they are, they write one, two, three, four sentences and they draw a picture to go with it. And they can write something about their day, something about their favorite food, animal, um, relative, whatever it is they want to write, really. I do try to give them some prompts sometimes because sometimes they like to go, I don't know what to write. So then I say, well, write about your favorite food or write about the, your favorite family trip or write about what you did yesterday. And then that seems to help them kind of you know, get on the right track. We're also going to work on math, and I have a whole thing on clues to subtraction. We're going to practice um, reading word problems and understanding if it's a subtraction problem or not, and then I will have them help write uh, subtraction problems as well. Then we're going to work on religion. Both Peter and Maria, in just a short five days, are going to be making their first communion, uh, and so we are going to be I mean, we've been working on it throughout the summer, but we're going to continue um, working on religion. And then I also have this book that a friend of mine gave me. She was not using it with her kids anymore. And it is called Mindbenders, and I actually really enjoy this. This is the Critical Thinking Company. It says it's for grades 3 to 6. I do it with the kids and we talk through it. It's a little too advanced for them to just do on their own, but it's really kind of fun because what you're doing is you're trying to use logic to figure out, um, it says here, a cat, a small dog, a goat, and a horse are named Angel, Beauty, King, and Rover. Read the clues to find each animal's name. So you have to figure out which one is the cat? Is the cat Angel, Beauty, King, or Rover? Which one is the dog? And then you put pluses and minuses in the spots um, based on that information. So like for example, King is smaller than both the dog. Okay, so that tells me that King, the dog is not King because it says King is smaller than both the dog and Rover. So it tells me that the dog also is not Rover. Okay, so I would put minus signs in both of those spots. And you just kind of keep going through here until you get a plus sign 
in a spot and then you know that that is who it is. Okay, so we're going to work through that tomorrow too. Those are kind of fun. I mean, it, it actually is really fun for me. I enjoy this kind of thing, this like critical thinking and um, deductive thinking and using logic and things like that. But it's a struggle for the kids, but um, that's okay. We're, we'll work through that. That will be plenty to get us started for the first day and just kind of getting everybody um, on track. Keep looking around. Now I see like my sight word bingo. That would be fun to do. Maria has been begging to do science. Um, I just don't think that we're going to be getting to that tomorrow. So I think what we'll do then on Wednesday is we'll do reading lessons again. And then I think we'll do the sight word bingo. That'll be a fun thing to do. And we'll probably, um, and then we'll start in on science. And then I think what we'll do is we'll kind of do a whole science unit, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. I'm not exactly sure. I haven't pulled out the book to see what the unit's going to be, but whatever the unit is, we'll put all of it in Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday in three days, and we'll get it all done, even though maybe it's scheduled for like two weeks or something like that. I feel like I'm rambling now because it is quarter to ten now and I'm ready to sit down, watch some news, and go to bed. So, okay, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I will put um, all of the information for my Catholic Homeschool Planner in the description box below. And if I have a coupon code or something like that, that will be in there as well. And with that, I say good night, and we will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.